welcome back to defenders wise this is dr paul thank you for joining us today our program is dedicated to answering your questions from biblical view if you want to share your view share it in comment section we don't suppress truth under any circumstances i started this channel as a forum for discussion so please subscribe to our channel visit us at www.drpal.org and subscribe to our podcast send me your questions to info@drpal.org we will discuss your question in the coming episodes also india is going through a very severe form of pandemic right now the poor are suffering a lot we should provide food medications and even oxygen supply for the severely ill our organization is at the forefront of fighting this pandemic please consider supporting our efforts visit our website www.drpal.org and make a tax deductible donation so coming to today's episode we will discuss the question should christians follow critical race theory should christians follow critical race theory nikke i made this video for you so you should watch it you asked a very important question every denomination has to answer this question recently the southern baptist convention has to deal with this issue some pastors left sbc over this issue so this will be in your church sooner than you think critical race theory subjective is to fight racism i suggest the following approach first to define the problem then look for the solution first to define the problem the problem is racism racism comes from the violation of the belief that all human beings are equal it's only a belief does it have a justification many atheists believe in human equality but there is no justification for equality in atheism karl marx built his social theory on atheism and darwinism atheism says there is no god darwinism says we are all animals evolved if that is true there is no reason to believe in equality marx loved darwin to the extent he wanted to dedicate the das kapital to darwin marxism is a strict materialistic philosophy in which human beings are at the mercy of external forces it divides humans into haves and have nots the bourgeois and the proletariat it is a survival of the fittest so marxism puts people on a fighting mode right from the beginning it has no justification for equality but look at christianity it starts with the basic truth that all human beings are created in the image of one god then sin entered into the world and here we are racism is a sin equality is christianity's gift to the world now christianity is a child of judaism and judaism is the first religion to teach human equality the universality of equality has justification only in a judeo christian framework no scientific theory can prove that all human beings are equal you need to bring god into the discussion to justify human equality so my point is even to define racism as a problem we need to rely on god don't misunderstand me here many marxists and atheists do believe in equality but they have stolen it from christian faith equality is not a natural derivative of their world views then secondly we should look for a solution racism is a universal spiritual problem and it needs a universal spiritual solution you might wonder is racism a universal problem yes it is the mainstream media makes you think that it is only a white and black problem their narrative is only whites can be racists i came to america in 2001 in the last 20 years 
I have seen racism in many forms, even in my medical practice. It is between blacks and Asians, Asians and Hispanics, Hispanics and blacks, Hispanics and whites, Asians and whites, Arabs and Asians, Asians and blacks. There is racism among all ethnic groups. Do not limit it to one group and one country. Christianity provides a solution to racism and that is redemption. God wants to redeem us through the blood of Lord Jesus Christ and make us into one family, one family of God. You need the grace of God to do this. Go back to civil rights moment. We saw people walking in the streets singing amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. People were going, blacks and whites, hands in hands. We shall overcome, we shall overcome someday. The Lord will see us through, the Lord will see us through, the Lord will see us through someday. Oh, deep in my heart, I do believe we shall overcome someday. You see, they believed in their hearts that the Lord will see through. Civil rights leaders like Martin Luther King Jr. or John Lewis, they were quoting Jesus Christ our Lord. They were quoting Isaiah, Jeremiah from the Bible. The Bible was... Martin Luther King Jr. quoted most often was Amos 5.24 But let justice roll down as waters and the righteousness as a mighty stream. You don't see that in progressive moments. No one is singing amazing grace or we shall overcome someday. They are angry and furious. They can't complete a sentence without an expletive. Rioting and looting have become routine parts of their protests. They are not quoting Isaiah or Amos. They are quoting Karl Marx or Mikhail Bakunin or Herbert Marcuse. What happened? Over the last 80 years or so, social activism has been thoroughly secularized. There are a few Christian voices like Ben Carson, but not many people are interested to listen to him. Let me introduce you to an individual named Mikhail Bakunin. He was a socialist anarchist. He rightly predicted that Marxism would lead to one-party totalitarian dictatorships or the proletariat. He did that like 100 years ago. His solution is complete anarchy. We should remove existing institutions like family, church and government. He is ruling our progressive movement from his grave. His ideology deeply influenced figures like Noam Chomsky and Herbert Marcuse. Critical race theory was born out of their ideas. They are atheists. There is no place for God or Messiah in their social theories for progress. Christians should think differently. Ben Carson wrote an excellent column in the Washington Post. I gave the link below, so go to that link and read it for a great insight into this problem. Ben Carson is a great neurosurgeon. Back when I was in medical school, I used to read his books on pediatric surgery. He performed very complex brain surgeries. Even to this day, before I perform a complex surgery, I often think about him. He inspires people with his example. If you look at his column, he starts with the words, moving our focus from equality to equity won't defeat racism it's another kind of racism. I agree with him. Moving from equality to equity is another kind of racism. America became number one in the world because of its meritocracy and its compassion. Are you competent to do this job? Do you have necessary skills to do this job? Do you have enough grades to enter this prestigious school? 
we are not asking those questions we have a job here and the applicant must have this skin color that is a recipe for disaster america is going to dogs because of this ideology of victimhood everyone wants to play a victim card but ben carson says these words very powerful words let me quote his words redistribution agendas driven by race based victimization narratives that demonize entire groups are bound to fail on many fronts all available evidence indicates that family structure educational attainment and workforce participation are the keys to reducing disparities thus reforms that strengthen the family prioritize student achievement and restore decent paying jobs for the american working class would do much better at addressing the issues that equity initiatives ostensibly aim to solve but doing that would be anathema to the equity advocates to them the fact that family formation and hard work lead to success is evidence that the system is broken so ben carson says strengthen the family when i was a kid my father and my mother disciplined me and corrected me they encouraged me to compete in math and science what is 2 plus 2 if the kid says 5 we are not supposed to correct him no wonder we are producing the dumbest kids in the world because we lost the art of discipline and inspiration our kids should be corrected encouraged and inspired to compete with the rest of the world cocooning them in micro spheres in the name of victimization will ruin their chances of success in the real world if you take a look at uh, critical race theory look at its founder kimberly crenshaw she coined the terms critical race theory and intersectionality now what in the world is intersectionality she illustrates the concept using traffic intersections let us say we drive into a traffic intersection from different directions we stop we turn and move on when it comes to our turn suppose there was an accident in that intersection one driver was negligent and rear-ended another vehicle are we going to blame that one driver i would blame that one negligent driver but kimberly says every driver is responsible for that accident all drivers are guilty if one driver fails in his judgment it is bizarre and dangerous if one white person shows racism all white people are guilty of racism if one policeman shows brutality all police are guilty of brutality if some people practiced the slavery in the past entire nation is guilty of slavery even today's generation so critical race theory calls entire groups of people as evil that is not right you can see the generalization fallacy police brutality how would we address it should we reform the police no they say we should defund the police you will see has been calling for defunding the police okay you will see we will start with you we will defund the capital police who protect you and your colleagues in the congress she is not doing that no 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 we need the capital police to protect us just remove the police from your neighborhood let us remove all the police from washington dc today and see how many senators and congress members will go back to washington tomorrow so critical race theory has no place for god or messiah progressives want to achieve a utopia a utopia without god a modern tower of babel it ends up in confusion chaos and disarray it has no blessings from god the author of human history i end every day singing a hymn last night i was singing a christmas hymn 
I don't have any rules. I sing Christmas hymns all around the year to rejoice in the coming Messiah. O come, O come, Emmanuel. O come, desire of nations, bind all peoples in one heart and mind. Bid envy, strife and quarrels cease. Fill the whole world with heaven's peace. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. So we rejoice in the coming of the Messiah. Emmanuel means God with us, our Lord Jesus Christ. He is the desire of the nations. He will bring heavenly peace into this world. We can rejoice while waiting for his coming. Progressive utopia has no place for the Messiah. It has no place for Lord Jesus Christ. Years ago, I read an autobiography by Arthur Ashe. Who is Arthur Ashe? He was a great tennis player, the only black man ever to win the singles titles at Wimbledon, US Open and Australian Open. He was the only black man to win those three titles. He had a sad story that he got HIV due to a blood transfusion. He endured racism in all its forms. His favorite Bible verse was Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2. Looking unto Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So if you go to Richmond, Virginia on the Monument Avenue, you will see the statue of Arthur Ashe with books in one hand and a tennis racket in the other hand. Under the statue on the foundation stone, we see the verse from Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2, looking unto Jesus, the other and finisher of our faith. So great African-American leaders like Arthur Ashe, Ben Carson, Martin Luther King Jr. look to Jesus to address racial injustices in our society. But today's secular progressives have turned to Karl Marx. We should not get into their critical race theories. Now God also has an intersection. It is called the cross. People of different races, ethnicities, languages, nationalities meet at the cross and get redeemed and reconciled in Christ. That is the redemptive intersectionality God planned for humanity. When you come to the cross, you nail your racism to it anti-black racism, anti-white racism, anti-Asian racism, anti-Hispanic racism, whatever it is, you nail it to the cross and walk out with a renewed mind and heart from that intersection. So my answer, Nikki, is we should stay away from these godless theories like a critical race theory and focus on God. God has solution for these social problems. If we listen to his word, he wants to provide those solutions. So that's my answer. Please share your comments. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Thank you and have a good day.